y'all? This is Paul Miller, a.k.a. DJ Spooky. I'm here kicking it with my lady, imaramedia.com, New York, Guiana Connection, like that. Peace. On est toujours au Midem, on rencontre énormément de monde. A tout de suite pour une superbe interview avec Paul Miller. de imaramedia.com, toujours au Midem, en compagnie du grand DJ Spooky, turntablist, producteur, un peu philosophe aussi, auteur, professeur, tu fais euh, énormément de choses et tu es venu donc au Midem pour apporter aussi ta part de productivité à, à cet événement. Euh, Qu'est-ce que ta présence au Midem signifie pour toi euh... Pour moi, je suis, euh, je, je, je m'occupe avec euh, Midim parce que je suis très, euh, comment dire en français, j'oublie les petits mots en français. Le, you know, I'm, I'm very focused on apps right now. Yeah. Je m'occupe avec apps, euh, des apps, euh, le monde des apps, euh, parce que euh, je pense que les apps sont, euh, they're going to be the future of music. Yeah. Everything needs to be about mobility and to needs to be focused on the idea that. You have to have a very strong relationship to devices like the cell phone yeah. and the iPad or the Google Android tablet, Google Play, stuff like that. So my most recent app is called DJ Mixer um, and it's a project where we have had over 12 million downloads of the DJ Mixer app and so I'm trying to figure out some fun ways to expand that for as a tool for many artists to use. When you just start your career, internet wasn't um, so important, the impact of internet wasn't the same. Um, for you, what is the most positive and negative side of internet uh, for young artists? Okay. Well, when I first started in the 90s, my peer group and people that I kind of look at and keep track of are people like DJ Crush, Cut Chemist, oh, yeah. Z Trip, um, DJ Shadow, then Amon Tobin, uh, and so on. And the internet at that time in the 90s, the late 90s, was always a kind of forum for downloading. And so you had MP3 and so on. So I just did a film project with Sean Parker, who co-founded Facebook, and also with Sean Fanning, who started Napster. So when you say the internet is now different, yes, absolutely. The problem is that there's kind of an entropy and everyone is trying to figure out how to uh, monetize the, uh, their relationship to what's going on exactly. with um, the whole changing landscape. And so I made a series of uh, soundtracks for the film. It's called Downloaded. Okay. And that's going to be out on VH1 in the US, which is a very popular TV channel. And okay. then, you know, apps, everything apps. Yeah. <laughs> All about apps. Um, tu es quelqu'un de très talentueux qui a eu la chance de quand même collaborer uh, avec uh, des artistes comme Metallica, Chuck D, Steve Rich, Yoko Ono, too. Um, tu as aussi beaucoup voyagé uh, à travers ta carrière. Qu'est-ce que, par rapport à tout ce, ce this huge background, um, could you tell us one memory Uh, something that happened and has maybe changed your life, your career. Well, the most, uh, I think, life-changing experience I've had is I took a studio to Antarctica. Okay. And I went to all the main ice fields to look at how climate change is affecting uh, the landscape there. Yeah. So all of the ice is melting. There's a tremendous amount of, of climate impact because of uh, hyper-consumerism, greenhouse gases, and uh, this kind of thing. So I took a studio to Antarctica to do what I call um, acoustic portraits of ice. And the issue for me is like, okay, if we understand that climate change is happening very rapidly, how do we as artists get people to understand climate change better? So I felt that music would help with that. And it was important for me to, um, to kind of look at uh, a beginning of music as a kind of um, a new frame. How do you frame in French? Uh, cadre. Uh, uh, music, for me, is a new species of cadre. D'accord. Uh, for uh, the, the issues of change of the climate. Okay. So, do you think music can change the world? Uh, yes, I think music can change the world, absolutely. If you have no heart about something, if you have no idea about something, 
music can give you a momentum, a push, and that push can change many things. So you look, I, that's my personal opinion. You look like a perfect person because you're a brilliant artist, professor, author, you think by yourself and you know how, how to give advices to people, you know how to, to rise spirit, you know, um, with your ideas. What is the thing you don't know how to do? <laughs> wow. Is there okay. something you, you you don't know? <laughs> yeah, I mean, one of the things I look at when I think about music is it's about the human spirit, it's about human yeah. emotion, and it's about passion. I tend to be very distant, and I tend to think about abstraction, and then figure out the human passion later. <laughs> so I need to understand that better. If I was to say, if you were, you're asking, what do I not do well? Yeah. It's like I'm not a people person. Okay. Some people are really good people. Uh, I'm, I'm working on it. Okay, so you're like a, a solo person. Soloist. Yeah. Soloist. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> um, is there something throughout your your life uh, that you would like to do and you haven't done yet? Yeah, I want to be the first DJ on the moon. I'm ser yeah, seriously, actually, I'd like to go there and figure that out. And uh, so, have you already planned planned the, the, this event, this huge event? Not yet, but working. You know, maybe in ten years. But you have to think very far ahead. <laughs> What is more important than music to you? Well, um, is the most important thing right now is ideas. Because anyone can make a song, anybody can make a music upload to Facebook, to SoundCloud, whatever. But you have, if you don't have a good idea, then it doesn't matter because there's so many people making music everywhere. It's just, it's overload of music. Um, can you tell us more about what's next coming for you uh, on the musical uh, and uh, other professional sides of your life? Well, this year, 2013, I have my new book. It's about apps, uh, okay. and I'm publishing yeah. that with MIT. Then also, um, I have another project where I am going to be doing some apps about the heart, literally le, le, le cœur, uh, and it's called Bio Beats, and it's beats made from the heart. Yeah. Comment dire en français? Les battements du cœur. Oui, les battements du cœur. Devient plus comme un rhythm, or more like a rhythm. Oh, d'accord. Le, le, le lien des battements du cœur avec la musique. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> and um, I, so that's a project. And then after that, I'm also the first artist in residence at the Metropolitan Museum, which is a big deal for the United States because it's the best museum in the U.S. And we are doing a series of initiatives and projects about art and music. Do you have a, a website yeah. address to give sure. to yeah, our I'm, followers? I'm, sure, I'm at djspooky.com, easy to remember. And uh, you can find everything there. We have free downloads of music, my app. We've up, we're up to 12 million downloads of the DJ Mixer app. So we're trying to encourage everybody to check that out. And then on top of that, um, pretty much everything you want to know, djspooky.com. Uh, it's, you know, Simple my idea. base. Yeah, home base. <laughs> Um, to finish, do you have any advices for um, young talent who aims at becoming comfort artists as you are? Okay, I'd say half the battle is being innovative, and then the other half is being organized. So organization and innovation, you have that, you have a very strong platform for success. Many artists are very disorganized, and they are just kind of floating around, and they're not sure, or they, they have no direction. And yeah. having a sense of purpose and momentum really helps. Okay. That's my advice. Paul Mira, thank you so much for this time you share with us. Um, Peut-être prochain rendez-vous avec DJ Spooky sur la lune. On, on, on verra ça plus tard, si ça se réalise vraiment. Bye.